what is up guys and we are back with another video and you guys can already tell with the new background behind me we are in the brand new region of inazuma and my god is it beautiful and you know aside from the beautiful region we also have the brand new character ayaka and we're gonna see how good she actually is but specifically we're gonna see how good she is in a realistic free-to-play setting and the reason I'm doing that is because it gives a good baseline on how much potential Ayaka has, especially with higher investment, better weapons, and all that jazz. If we take a look at my Ayaka, she has 1808 attack, she has 20% crit rate and 220% crit damage, and on top of that I also have 160% ER. The reason why my ER is so high is because I'm running the Festering Desire. You can run whatever sword you have, whatever the best sword is for you. I'm just running a free to play weapon just to show you guys a baseline Ayaka. And as you guys can see, my talents aren't fully invested either. My highest is my burst at 7. And the reason my crit rate is so low is because I'm running the 4 piece cryo set. So what this is going to do, it's going to give me 40% crit rate because I'm going to be running her in a freeze team. And on top of that, I'm going to get another 15% because I have cryo resonance. And before we jump into anything, let me go ahead and just show you the rest of my team. So we're going to be running Sing Chu. Again, nothing too crazy. He has 62% crit rate and 81% crit damage, mostly focused on energy recharge. And then we have my Animo Traveler right here. The reason we have him is because we can run 4-piece Viridescent Shred. And again, nothing too crazy, only 600 attack, only 26% crit rate, only 90% crit damage. I'm trying to keep this as baseline as possible, that way you guys can only go up from here. And lastly, we have my Diona. Again, her crit rate, crit damage, it doesn't even matter. All I'm focused on is this energy recharge, and she's using the free-to-play Favonius Warbo. So let's go ahead and jump into the Abyss, see how far we can get, see the pros and cons with Ayaka, and just talk about how good she is as a free-to-play character. So far, so good. The only thing you have to get used to, which I kind of found while just messing around with Ayaka, is her dash. I still don't know what the best way to auto-attack cancel her is. We're probably going to find that out later in the video. I mean, not later in the video, but later when more people test her. But let's see how she's doing. Honestly, her burst is doing a good amount of damage. And the cool thing about Ayaka that like makes her better than Kaching is she doesn't really suffer from stamina problems like Kaching. Because her dash is actually less stamina and her charge attack is less stamina as well. But you can see like we're basically keeping them permanently frozen. And again, like I'm using a free-to-play weapon, like my stats aren't too crazy, and I'm still doing a decent amount of damage. And the cool thing about this team is unlike normal permafreeze, you don't have to run Chong Yun. You can just run Diona or whatever cryo character you want. Okay, one thing I didn't pay attention to last floor, which I want to pay attention to this floor, is how fast we can get Ayaka's burst back up. Because I want to see with Festering Desire and Favonius Warbo, if we have enough to get Ayaka's burst up in one rotation. And by one rotation, I basically mean to have Ayaka's burst back up before it comes off of cooldown. So the cool thing about Ayaka is she has AoE freeze on all of her abilities. So she has freeze on her E ability, her Q ability, and her charge attacks. And you'll see right here my burst, my E ability, and my charge attacks are keeping these hatchlings frozen. Because I know these are the most annoying characters in the game because they just run around. And the fact that you can just almost one take them with a free to play team is kind of insane. And as you guys can see, my burst is basically almost back up. Like there's only a few energy that's missing. And please ignore that air ball of a charge attack. I don't even know how that happened. So let's see now if I can get my Ayaka's burst back up before it comes back off cooldown. And if we can do that consistently. So I just used my burst. I used my E ability. The cool thing about Ayaka's E ability, you get four particles. Unlike Gula's who only gets two. And then with Diona's Favonius Warbo, already we have our burst back up. And you guys can tell, unlike Kaching, Ayaka does not suffer from stamina issues because I'm dashing like every other second just to make sure that my cryo application is up. And my stamina bar is basically full. And again, my burst is back up. I'm able to do another rotation and keep this guy permanently frozen. And the cool thing is my burst does a really decent amount of damage. Like it's doing 7 or 8k per swirl. And I'm calling it swirl because it's like venti swirl. And it does it like 21 or 22 times. That's like 150,000 damage if they stay inside. Uh, which is actually ridiculous. And you can see this guy's life bar just melt away. Okay, so far, so good. This is the last challenge. Let's go ahead and see how we do against the Abyss Lecter or Herald. I forgot which one. 
So let's do the usual. Let's get these guys to teleport to us. Do our Anemo MC's ability. Again, Anemo MC absolutely sucks aside from its E ability. And the fact that we got this far with him, it's a pretty big accomplishment. And even though we only have two cryo characters, let's see how fast we can melt the Abyss Herald shield. So already, like, he gets frozen in place. He's getting absolutely melted with our burst. We can come over here, do damage to the Abyss Mages. And again, we're using MC, so we have to chase after them. Please ignore the MC. He's basically a hindrance on our team. But Ike, on the other hand, is doing crazy amount of damage. And now that they're cornered right here, we can do a beautiful burst. And again, our burst rotation is so good. It's just consistently coming back up with only two prior characters. And this is something that Yula suffers with. But with this team, like, Ayaka does not even suffer. So we basically melted through this guy. We have like 40 seconds to break his shield. I think that's plenty of time. I think I kept him frozen for too long because he's supposed to put a shield up, but I'm not letting him do that. So I kind of wasted like 10 or 12 seconds just on my own. But as you guys can see, my shield or his shield is getting absolutely shredded. The cryo application on Ayaka is crazy and our burst is going to be back up in one rotation, hopefully. And just like that, we used Iona. This time we didn't get Favonius Bow's effect, so let's see how much we can get. So without Favonius Warbow, we're slightly below getting one full rotation. But when we get the Favonius Warbow effect, we get our full rotation and get the burst up and easy clear. And there you go guys, a 9 star clear with a completely free to play team with just a C0 Ayaka and the Festering Desire. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the pros and cons that I saw starting with the pros. So the very first thing I noticed is unlike Eula, Ayaka had her burst up before he even came off cooldown 99% of the time. A lot of that has to do with the fact that I have 160% energy recharge. Now this brings me to the flexibility of Ayaka, which I kind of alluded to at the beginning of the video where I said you can go any weapon you want. Say you're lacking crit damage, you can go a crit damage weapon. Say you're lacking attack percent, you can go an attack percent weapon. Say you're lacking energy recharge, you can go an energy recharge weapon. And this doesn't just apply to weapons, this applies to artifacts as well. Say you have no energy recharge, then you can switch to a piece which has less crit damage, less attack percent, and go for higher energy recharge. And the reason why Ayaka can get away with doing that is because both of her passive talents are multiplicative effects. Her first passive talent gives you a 30% normal and charge attack bonus when you use your E ability. Her second one just gives you a straight up 18% cryo damage bonus every time you dash. And on top of that, she gets passive crit damage ascension. So in terms of stats, Ayaka has it, allowing you to be flexible with the weapon and artifacts. And then another pro that I mentioned on the second floor is that she has AoE freeds on everything. She has a pretty massive AoE e ability, she has an AoE burst, and her charge attacks have this weird AoE spread and she can hit multiple enemies. And we saw that against the hatchlings where we were hitting both hatchlings even though they were behind each other. One big problem with Kaching is her stamina management. Because as we just saw from her passive talents, every time Ayaka dashes, she gets 10 stamina back. So this allows Ayaka to just dash around infinite amount of times. Not really infinite, but you guys get what I mean. And on top of that, she can spam her charge attacks without having to worry too much about running out of stamina. So just to summarize all the pros really quickly, I'm going to list them all out. The very first one is the flexibility that she has. The second one is the amount of damage she deals, especially at low investment. The third one is her AoE cryo application, even with her charge attacks, allowing for great freeze combinations. And then the last one is stamina management. Now let's go ahead and talk about some cons that you might face with Ayaka. So don't get me wrong, her dash is actually pretty decent, especially compared to the old Mona dash when it comes to dodging. But the only awkward part is, is to get cryo infusion, you have to dash. So it makes some uncomfortable scenarios and it just makes it awkward to dash at certain times. And the second con for Ayaka is going to be her regular normal attacks. Because unlike her charge attacks, her regular normal attacks really don't do that much damage. So in order to get the best damage for Ayaka is you're going to mix up your normal and charge attacks. And this kind of brings me back to the first con because you have to charge at awkward times. So you might be in the middle of your normal attack chain and you have to dash. Or you might be in the middle of a charge attack and you have to dash and you accidentally cancel it because it turns into a physical attack. So there is some awkwardness slash clunkiness, at least that I felt, when trying to do a normal charge attack combo and dash in order to keep the cryo infusion up. And you guys saw that in the abyss because sometimes I would miss a charge attack or sometimes I would dash too early or sometimes my charge attacks would turn into normal attacks in the middle of my combination. Overall, if you're a free to play player and you can get used to her dash or you don't mind it that much, then yes, Ayaka is a super strong character, especially at the low investment that she requires. Because as you guys saw, even at low investment with a completely free to play team, we cleared floor 12 with nine stars. And that's something a lot of players struggle with. And the fact that we can do it with a low investment Ayaka is pretty amazing, especially considering our talents aren't fully leveled 
and that we have zero constellations, Ayaka is a very, very free-to-play friendly character because she doesn't really require that much and you can slap any weapon on her. So this is my conclusion so far. I know as the week goes on, people are going to find crazy combos with Ayaka as well as how to perfectly time her normal and charge attacks and just how to work around her dash. Those things are going to come out. But as of now, Ayaka is a super strong free-to-play friendly character. That's my opinion. Let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if you guys did well on your Ayaka pulls or if you don't want to pull for her and why. But that's pretty much it for me. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.